Hello everyone. It is still October 12th, Tuesday. I did a video earlier today. Um, what did I do a video on? <laughs> My memory really, really is that bad. Um, old pumpkin platters. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, you can see it's dark out now, and I'm still glazing pottery, and I'll be here. I have to get the stuff in the kiln tonight, so, oh my gosh, I think I glazed a couple, four, no, two pumpkins, four pumpkin platters I painted, and I did some um, sunflower plates. So I thought, I can't remember if I um, demoed. Uh, me painting a sunflower plate so I thought well while I'm doing this I'll make a video um, I know a lot of you guys asked for demos of the Christmas tree um, that won't be till next week or the week after I have to get through pumpkin season first <laughs> and then um, the Christmas tree and yes for something else too hmm. I don't know I have to go back through my notes <laughs> now what was that Oh, purse planters. Somebody wanted to see um, my pick, ah, me pick, make some, I can't even talk anymore, make some purse planters. Um, but they're really easy. So, yeah, we'll do those too. Um, anyway, so I thought I, I did three of these so far and I got one left. So I thought I'd demo it for you. So, and then I do this on the back. These are really easy to do. Um, and I always like to put something on the back of my plates. Actually, I forgot on the pumpkin plate, the pumpkin platters, but platters are kind of different. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't usually put anything on the bottom of the platters. I don't know why. I probably should. Anyway, it's too late now. It's nine, I think it's like eight o'clock at night. I'm, I, you know, I'm old. I can't go till midnight. I used to be up till midnight one o two o'clock in the morning can't do that anymore anyway i need my sleep so i'll we'll demo one of these plates one of these sunflower plates like i said they're easy to do this won't take too long okay so i'm going to and these are um just molded plates too i bought um let's see here I'll show you After these went off a say on sale, I bought like 15 of them. These were, I think they were $2 a piece or something. And then after the holidays, they went to like 99 cents. So I bought like well, maybe 10, 12, I don't know, something like that. So um, I throw plates on the wheel, but you know, for some reason they, they warp more. They have a tendency to get the S cracks more. Probably because when you um, wire them off, you know, you're stretching the bottom of that clay. And also something to do with the, um, it's kind of red. Yikes. I don't know why. I do have some, my water's getting kind of, yeah, a little red in it. <laughs> my, paint, my plate looks a little pink. Yikes. Goodness sakes. It'll, it'll be all right. Okay, so just sponge it off. And it'll probably burn out anyway, so, because it's so thin. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is do the center part. And just like I was saying with the pumpkins, I like to just get the outline. So I kind of know where I'm going for the for the petals and you really can't mess these things up too much they really are they're easier than they look especially the way I do them see that so then I just kind of do circles And this is just a, a brown underglaze amico velvet 
it's a little bit it's a little bit watered down okay then I'm gonna go back with water I'm gonna dip my brush in water and just kind of go around and spread kind of smear them a little bit because I don't want them you know real dark brown so I made the earlier video if you saw it with um, the pumpkin platters and then I had to take a break because I had to pick up my mom from the nursing home and I was gonna take her out to dinner and well we took her out to dinner usually I have her here but our refrigerator broke it died we tried to we tried to keep it but it just it just died <laughs> so in our so we went and looked and we, we bought a new refrigerator today I think we got the cheapest model we could find <laughs> The area where we keep our refrigerator um, isn't very big. This is we bought kind of a a weird house. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so the refrigerator wasn't very much. Thank goodness it wasn't one of those. We don't have a water line, so we don't have an ice maker or anything fancy. It's just a refrigerator at the bottom. But anyway, so I couldn't so I couldn't bring my mom here. Because most of the food we had to throw away. <laughs> so took her out to eat dinner and uh, and then I um, came back and painted. So I had a little bit of a a little bit of a break um, from painting. So I'm gonna I had bright yellow and it was too yellow. So I added a little bit of brown and a little bit of white. Um, you can't see me, you really can't see me mixing it, but it's just, I just, I don't want bright yellow. I don't, you know, so like I said, it's, yeah, you can probably see when I put it on, there you go. So it's got a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. And, um, as I've said in other videos, I don't, I don't like flat colors, um, I like when there's different colors, you know, mixed in and you can see the different colors. I think it makes it more interest interesting. So anyway, so so yeah, so I took my mom. We ate at O'Charlie's. And that's that's always interesting, taking her out to dinner. Cause she's she's in a wheelchair and she has dementia. So you have the same conversation over and over and over again. But God love her. She's just so happy when we take her out. We got back and there was an ambulance and a fire truck. So I said, I hope they're not burning the place down. <laughs> but she, she is a trip. We always have to giggle at, you know, when they have dementia, it's not just their memory. It's kind of, I don't know, they kind of get funny habits and she just keep eating. She likes, eat, keeps eating rolls because she forgot she had a roll already. It's kind of, I don't know, I guess. It's not funny, but it's kind of a giggle. I mean, you have to laugh at some things, don't you, in life. If you take life too seriously... Um, it gets too depressing. So yeah, so I had a little bit of a, a little bit of a break taking her out to dinner. So, so yeah, so because the refrigerator died, and then, and then we realized our wash machine was dying too. So we found a wash machine on sale. So now we have a wash machine and we have a refrigerator coming. Everything seems to go at once, doesn't it? I don't know why that is, but 
So I'm going to dip a little bit of white in here. I don't have too much white on the other ones, but I do see how much interest that adds. Just add a little bit of white. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to soften it up a little bit. I've got some Amica white in a jar. I don't know why I put them all in jars. I really don't. I like them in this tray, as most of you, most of you watched me have seen before. It's just a bead tray. Because I, I like to use my underglazes like watercolors. Um, <clears throat> although I don't really, you know, I say that, but I really don't um, water them down too much. Because I fire to cone uh, five. And um, they can burn out a little bit. So this uh, this is B mix, B mix stoneware, B mix five with grog stoneware. Um, my favorite my favorite white clay. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of dark down here. Just to add some dimension. I use the uh, the B mix with the grog because I do the hand building. If I was just going to throw, I would not use the grog. I would get the one with um, no grog. It just it's so nice and smooth. But it just doesn't it doesn't hold up well enough <clears throat> if you're going to hand build it's best to get a a clay with some grog in it it, it just it helps things from warping it it, it helps things from cracking um, it just it makes life when you're hand building um, you know it makes life a lot easier if you've got the right clay to begin with. So I'm going to this ran just a little bit over here so I'm going to just sponge it off. And I I like to um, I prefer to paint on um, bisqueware It's nice and hard, and you don't have to worry about how much water you're adding to it. If, if I was adding this much water to greenware, there's a good chance that it could crack. And then, you know, you've wasted all that time making it, painting it, and then it cracks on you. So, okay, so I've got it kind of done here, but I think I'm going to brighten it up, I don't know, add a few, just, just some, ah, just some strokes there. I just, I don't know, it adds texture to it and... I know the camera's probably not picking up a lot of it, which is unfortunate. I don't have a fancy camera. I just use my phone camera, but I, you know, these phone cameras are pretty, pretty fancy anymore. Of course, if I knew how to use it really well, that would even help, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'll have to call my son up, make him come over. Because it doesn't take close-ups very well. I don't know why it does that, but it seems like it gets kind of blurry when I take some close-up photos. Okay, so now I'm going to put the the leaves on 
Okay, so there's, doesn't really can't, doesn't really show up much, does it? Let's see if it gets a little closer. How's that? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit closer. It looks like there's a, it looks like there's kind of a glare. It looks like you can't really see all the colors, but okay. So let's put a few leaves in here. And I don't, I don't go all out on leaves. Always put an odd number in, they say. Although I think one of mine does have four, but I usually try to do three. In greens, um, <clears throat> you want to kind of put at least, you know, a couple good, two or three coats on. Um, greens like to burn out brown at the higher temperatures. And I, actually, I might put just a touch of yellow in there just to make them a little more interesting, right? And let's see. So I want to add a little bit of brown up in here. I don't, I don't want it real dark brown though. But I don't like all this white. Yeah, it's running. So I just wa washed my brush off a little bit so I can kind of blend these a little bit better. I'm not putting any more color on. So these are all, like I said, Amigo Velvet Underglazes. Um, and most of these colors in here aren't really, some of them I use straight out of the jar, but most of them I just... You know, you're always mixing colors and adding colors. And this the green leaves, though, are the avocado. That avocado green. That's my <clears throat> that's my favorite green. And I've tried to mix glazes to get that color. Um, I don't know, and it, it it just didn't get quite the color that Amigo did. So I just buy that one. And then I'm going to go back and add a little bit of yellow again. Cuz I don't want them I don't want them too dark. See that if you can see that kind of softens them. Yes, yeah, so I will put these in the kiln tonight and hopefully the kiln gods will be good to me and we will have a an unloading, a kiln unloading. Um, today's Tuesday, so it'll take, probably, well not till Thursday because um, it'll take, you know, a day to cook and a day to cool down. So if you, here's a glob. <clears throat> so 
if you get chunks of glaze on your piece, just let it dry and then wipe them off. Um, because you don't want to glaze over chunks of underglaze. Um, the, when you have a thick chunks, um, it will come through the clear um, and then it'll have a matte surface and you don't want that. And make sure your clear is zinc free clear. Um, the zinc can kind of interfere with it a little more. So, and then, I don't know, probably won't pick this up. And then these little, yeah, I don't think the camera's going to pick that up. These little round, tiny bowls, they're, they're called oolites. And they're just little pieces of, um, like with a chemical, yeah, the camera won't pick that up. But you know what I mean. There's little tiny bowls that form in your glaze. And those are oolites. So just, once your glaze is dry, just wipe them off. They're, they're kind of the chemical reaction in the glaze. And you don't, you don't need them. Okay. Okay, so let's, well that's drying on that side. Let's, um... I had some stuff to the back. I noticed they had a couple leaves or petals. A couple petals. It's supposed to rain this weekend for my art show. I'm hoping. I'm hoping they're wrong. I mean, they usually are, right? <laughs> I don't know about your meteorologist, but. When you want them to be right, they're right. Or they're wrong. <laughs> when you want them to be wrong, they're right. Okay. And then let's put a leaf on here. Like I said, I don't usually do like a whole flower on the back. Um, and again, so these won't stick to the kiln shelf because they're under glazes. And under glazes are really... Um, they're just clay and pigment. Now, not, from what I understand, you know, not all underglazes are made the same. And I did use another underglaze that stuck to the kiln shelf. Um, well, they kind of stuck to each other when I was making some red birds. And um, that was not good. So I... I try to use just uh, Amico's because apparently uh, some of them have a flux in them and flux is like a silica that melts and it's what makes your glaze glossy and it's what makes it melt and move and it will and it will stick to the kiln shelf but I have never had that problem with um, Amico Velvets. So, okay. I think I'm ready for the, to underline it. Or outline it, not really underline it. Outline it with underglazes. There we go. Okay. Let's move this back just a little bit. Get my spray bottle out of the way. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. And the outlining really does add so much to it. Now this one's um, look at how, look at the different yellows. I think I like the yellow on this better. This one's a little bit deeper yellow. I didn't need as much. Um, let's see if I can't bring that up a little bit. Gotta be careful here. Oh, I accidentally turned the whole video off. Okay. 
So I'm using my Zyam applicator bottle. It's number 20 tip. And I don't empty this out at all. I just um, keep adding to it. When I store it, I make sure I store it upside down so that the tip always has underglaze in it and it does not harden in there. I use uh, Amigo Velvet's Jet Black for the underlining. And I do add a little bit of water to it. And you just want to squeeze slightly. I think this is probably the most fun part. Except when it gets clogged. <laughs> if your tip is clogging up constantly, chances are your underglaze has um, chunks in it or, you know, hard pieces of underglaze in it. And I've, I've had that happen before. And then I just take, the, I just dump the whole thing back out, rinse my, rinse my applicator bottle out, and then I will sieve the underglaze. Uh, Clayscapes Pottery has this cup sieve. If it's right in your glaze jar, um, you just put it in there, dump your uh, underglaze in it, and then sieve it through and put it back in your applicator bottle. Um, but I like, I like, theirs is a small, like I said, it's just, it's for uh, a pint jar of glaze. And it's really nice. And that's Clayscapes Pottery. I got one from them when I ordered a bunch of, when they went to brushing glazes, they were giving them out. If you ordered a bunch of underglazes, I mean, uh, they're not underglazes, but when you ordered a bunch of their new brushing glazes, and I just love that thing. Of course, it'd be really nice if I could find it. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what I did with it. So I'm not going to have to buy another one. That's what I do. I don't know. I, I, I buy things, and then I can't find things, so I just buy them again. And then I buy them and buy them and buy them, and I figure, that's like scissors. You know, when you're looking for a scissors, you can never find a scissors. I just keep buying them and buying them and soon enough I have about a hundred of scissors and they'll be in every section of the house and I'll always have my scissors. <laughs> I don't know, why is that? That and extension cords. We're, we're famous for extension cords too. I don't know where they all go. We got extension cords everywhere. Okay. So let's do the petals. Oh, and of course it's going to clog up. This is when I got to be nice and make sure I don't say a bad word. Try not to. Okay. There we go. Make sure you guys can see. Can you see what I'm doing? I don't know. It sure doesn't look like it. There we go. Like I can see it, but can you see it? I'm going to try to work kind of backwards here. Push this back. There we go. And I just wipe the tip off each time on this paper towel. And that kind of helps it from getting too clogged up. Also, always, um, you know, try to pull the applicator away from you. 
I shouldn't say away from you. Oh, well, try to pull the applicator, you know, away from the tip in that direction so that you're not clogging the tip up. Thanks for watching my YouTube videos. When I started making them, um, I really didn't think anybody would watch them at all. But, you know, I learned. I'm a, I'm a self-taught potter. Um, I never went to college for it. And um, I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos. There's so many good potters out there and who are willing to share their um, their talents and their knowledge and so that's that's what I I did. I just watched YouTube videos like over and over again and you know just keep doing it until you find the type of design you want to make. Um, try to make it your own. So that when you know people come to your booth and they pick up a piece of pottery, someone says, "Oh, that's oh, I saw your pottery. It's so and so." As soon as they see your pottery, they know it's you because there's there's something unique about it um, that you do. So to try to you know, it's okay to take inspiration from potters online and potters you know everywhere. But try to make it unique to yourself somehow so that you can create your own niche because there's so many potters out there. Um, let's just see. You don't want to, you know, you're not going to compete with them if yours is different in some way than theirs. So there's the front. So let's do the back here. Make sure I don't gotta be careful I don't touch anything that's still wet. I kind of lay it like that on an angle. And I don't, um, of course I've drawn enough of these over the years that I don't really need to freehand them first. Of course I don't, um, I usually don't draw on my pottery first. I just paint it. So there we go. Oops. Oh, can you see the... I really can't see the color probably that much. So I clean my table off. I might be able to get closer to the camera, but. So there we go. I'm trying to get the whole plate in there. Can you see it? There we go. So I've got four of these done. I guess, whoops. You can see they're all, you know, they're a little different. This one's definitely the, the one here. And I don't know if it's your, it's my right, but it's probably, I don't know if it's your left. Um, different colors. So I am going to wait for these to dry for about a half an hour. And then I'm going to come back and gently, with a real thick first coat of clear zinc-free glaze, um, I'm going to put a quick coat on. So I just use a Mako. These are the best brushes. This is the only brush I spend a lot of money on. Um, this is the Mako number eight fan brush. It's a number eight. I don't know if you can see, but see how thick it is? It's not, it, look at it, it's glaze is coming out of it. But I dipped this in the zinc uh, zinc free clear and it gets it, it'll absorb a lot of glaze and then I just gently put on a first coat very liberally very gently I'm not dragging it across and I let it dry 
So let your first coat dry. And then I immediately, well, when it's dry, I'll put the second coat on. And if the glaze is going on thin, I'll put on three coats. If the glaze is going on a little bit thicker, I'll do two coats. But I will glaze, I will clear glaze these within a half an hour, all these, and get them done. Because by, in a couple hours, these will all be in the kiln. Um, I've got a couple of mugs to do too, but I don't know if I have time for those. Um, I don't know if they'll fit in the kiln anyway. They might. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I will, I, like I said, I work on bisque wear. So once, once it's bisqued, I will go ahead and underglaze it and clear it and then fire it. So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching. And, um, so next, see in a couple days, I will have a kiln opening and you guys can see how these turn out. And they should look pretty much just like this, only um, shiny because I'll have a clear on them. But um, it's always, you know, you hope that there's no pinholes or anything. But anyway, put this back up. Ah, back. <laughs> so, um, so today's Tuesday. So by Thursday, I should have a kiln opening. Um, I teach Thursday night, so... Hopefully it'll be cool by Thursday morning and I can do a kiln opening before I go to work to teach uh, hand, or wheel throwing. Thursday night I'm teaching wheel throwing to beginners. And uh, oh, that's always fun <laughs> to watch it for the first time, especially especially this with the long nails. Um, you know, I don't know. Can you see me? This stupid thing won't stay up. <laughs> um I mean, you, you know, when you throw on the wheel, you don't have to have short nails, but it helps because your nails, you know, dig into the clay and you keep nicking it. And I, I just keep cutting mine shorter and shorter. I have, I have, of course I got man hands. See, I got me, I got my dad's hands. <laughs> but I have no nails. And, um, but anyway, you know, and some of them, and some of them, you know, it's kind of funny because they don't they don't like getting dirty and it's like okay well you're gonna get dirty because you're gonna have clay all over you so it's always it's always kind of fun to watch the new ones <laughs> but, but they're doing really good um they're doing great they're actually making a bunch of bowls and stuff so they're doing really good so anyway that's what i got going on a thursday so we have a kiln opening and um stay tuned and thanks for watching <laughs> Bye bye <laughs>